there. Welcome to All Things Agile. I'm Petula, your host. And today I want to talk to you about the book Coaching Agile Teams by Lisa Adkins. I read this book about 10 years ago and to this day I still recommend it. So I thought why not bring you along in a chat and tell you why I recommend it. I read it um, when I was still a Scrum Master back then and not a very good one. And I was convinced that there was something that I could do to unlock myself. And that book did unlock many things for me. And I am really sure that if you read it on your own and if you do a book club, you will have many takeaways of your own. So don't consider the insights that I will share here with you as the only thing that this book can give you. Expect high performance. Ultimately, you were there to enable and conduct even your team or teams to reach high performance, to become better every day. A coach is not a therapist. It's not someone that just lurks around or someone that speaks at people. You were there to model, to explain, to vouch for what performance, quality, betterment is and that you know you know and why that's important you would expect a running coach to help you become better at running so why wouldn't you expect the same from an agile coach you expect them to help you become better at agile master yourself don't inflict help or your views or um, your violence on people yes your violence that's something that struck a chord with me when I noticed, when I read it, how self-aware are you? How do you talk to people? Do you um, use a lot of sarcasm? Maybe sometimes you belittle people um, or maybe just hold your views a little bit too strongly. All these things do matter, you know. Um, how much space in the end you really make for the other, for listening, for meeting people where they are? Yes, you are pushing for performance. That's the idea that you're selling, but the way you are doing this is extremely important and that's what defines you as a great coach. As an agile coach, there are many stances to adopt. Coach being just one of them. You also teach, you mentor, and you're supposed to transition among them several times, choosing the one that's most appropriate, sensing the moment, the situations that you're in. So in a way, I kind of find that Agile Coach is a little bit of a misnomer because coach is just one of the things that you're offering people. You are coaching at at least two levels, individual and collective. While it's very obvious to me now, it wasn't at first, um, not so much in the beginning. Some beginner coaches, they don't see the importance of one-on-ones. And I certainly did not. Um, but you can't escape one-on-ones if you want to be an effective coach. Because those are the moments where you can connect with people at a rather deeper level and build trust. At first, I was very hesitant and I wanted all conversations to happen collectively. But with time and practice, I did understand how powerful and respectful one-on-ones can really be. Now, you also have to be aware that there is the opposite of that. And I had a colleague that was on that space. He was very good in his one-on-one interactions and he was actually performing rather poorly um, when he was in, in a collective setting. And the reason why you uh, also want to be good at those spaces is because just staying in the one-on-one realm does nothing for your facilitation and conversational skills, but also might be putting you in the wrong position, which is maybe being too much of a person's friend or, um, I don't know, maybe like a coffee colleague and you are none of these things. You were the person's coach. I also think there is like a third level, um, if you may, which is kind of a, a step above the collective one. And it is understanding and realizing that you do all these things, coaching, mentoring, teaching, etc., at the organizational level, which means bringing your people, several teams together and helping them converse 
and evolve. Now, that was the very best part, and it was the first time ever I saw someone attempting to introduce professional coaching as part of the skill set of enabling agile teams. I was a very well-versed Scrum master at the time, very well-versed in Scrum, should I say. And I was also constantly uh, puzzled on why certain techniques, sometimes very simple, just wouldn't work with my teams. Well, I was lacking that skill. I was not a coach. So a key aspect of coaching is that it's not a conversation. Coaching is a working session in which coach and coachee work together to discover or solve something of importance for the coachee, something that will help them increase their performance. Coaching has a structure, and in the book, Lisa actually presents it as having an arc with a beginning, a peak, and an end. The final part of the book is dedicated to something that is always hard to talk about, but Lisa approaches it with so much candor and grace. Not only she explains conflict navigation, but she also doesn't sugarcoat on the fact that sometimes conflict is just too much and there is nothing you can do about it. It is oftentimes really just a matter of understanding your own limitations as a coach, as a person, and understanding and respecting the boundaries needed in those situations. You can't solve for others. And on a similar note, she also prepares you for when you fail, because you will fail. Uh, I myself was failing. I could almost say I was free falling when I got a hold of that book. Um, she opened my eyes about the need for practices that you should have for regaining focus and perspective when you're not performing as well as a coach, but also how to avoid the ego trap. Um, coaching requires a lot of practice and professional coaches themselves, they spend years of training and hundreds and sometimes thousands of logged hours before they can be accredited for a reason. You can just wake up someday and feel like you're ready to coach and expect to be great at it. Ultimately, agile coaching is a journey without a destination that is left very evident in the book. That book has um, aged so well. It is a companion to be consulted many, many times as needed. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and if it was useful, leave a comment down below. Maybe you already read this book and you have a favorite part that I did not mention in here. Let me know what it is. Also, feel free to leave a suggestion of a book. I read a lot of things and I might have just read the book that you have in mind. That's it for today. I'll stop here for now and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.